the third and final day of the Bassmaster Florida Invitation. This afternoon at the final weigh-in, the top 60 anglers will share in $137,500 prize money. But that's eight angling hours away. And for some of these tournament anglers, it will be a very long day. First day leader Jim Bitter, now in second place, is fishing almost within shouting distance of the weigh-in area. He continues to pound the bulrushes and grass with topwaters and worms, and like many this final day, can only connect with the smaller fish. First place angler David Fenton isn't faring much better. He and his partner John Butler, who's now in fourth place, elect to fish the area where Butler got his limit early yesterday. The fish have either moved or they're not biting. The two Bassmasters relocate to where Fenton caught his fish, but that area too has dried up. What fish there are, are small. But someone, somewhere, will always catch the bass. So here comes George Bowman making his challenge for the lead. He's about a half a pound or so out. Uh, he has only six bass, but he's got a, he's got an inordinately, he's got one very, very good bass, in there, which could be the magic. Let's watch the scale. He's got to have about 10, 12 pounds. 12 pounds, 11 ounces, and that's going to be awful close, depending on what the other fellas do, George. What's, what's your feeling right now? Uh, somebody will probably come from behind and blow me away. <laughs> You don't really believe that. Well, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of people come yet, so we just have to wait and see. Well, that's a nice that's fish. fish. That's the magic. That fish right there, if you win this tournament, that's the fish that did it. That's right. <laughs> what lure will you use to catch that bass? Kind of want a red comfort shad worm. Shallow worm. Yeah, about five foot, four or five foot. <laughs> you ought to catch that bass. All right. Good luck. We hope you will. Hope you wait home. And from the back of the right. pack in 60th place, Woo Dave's. Look out here. 21 pound, 5 ounce. Let's hold that hog out of there. Is that the largest stringer for today? I believe it is. This could be the largest bass for today. What is the largest bass we're looking for? Eight? Hold him up there. All right, let's, let's check him out here and see. Put the lid on him. <laughs> All right, going for the big bass today. Nine, eight. Nine pound, eight ounces. Congratulations. Ooh. Now, this is the last day. I know you can tell everybody what you caught these on. It ain't no secret anymore. I used a red shad colored worm, seven and a quarter inches long. That's it. And George Bowman's fears are realized. Charlie Murphy, Florida, seven bass. Murphy? All right, watch, if you notice, the seventh place man, 22 pounds and nine ounces. Bob Cobb, before we put him on a scale, quickly give me a rough to make, estimate. He needs 14 pounds, 13 ounces. 14 pounds and how much? 13 ounces will tie the leader, who at the moment is George Bowman. All right, let's put him on a scale. Woo! Eighteen pounds, nine ounces, which if I'm not, this is unofficial, but I believe you pulled into the lead. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, I know you want to, you got one dear friend in there that called about a five and a half, six and a half pound bass. I was glad to see her when she came in. I got rid of a 12 inch with her, so. You caught a small one and pick her up and hold her there with your right hand and kiss her like you mean business. Woo! Lord. This, that's solid gold. You realize what kind of, we're talking thousands of dollars worth of fish. Let's weigh this fish so the record will show what the weight of your largest bass was. Nice and gentle, layer in there. Folks, this one magic cast can be the difference in glory and just another man on the list. And there she is, look, six pounds, 13 ounces. And look caught a little bitty fish. So it's a five pound advantage you picked up on that one bass. You want to tell us quickly what you were using to catch that beautiful fish? Well, I caught her on a grape shad culprit. Fishing foot tight water. Flipping in hydrilla. How you feel right now, pal? Shaky. <laughs> well, you know we got a few more guys coming in, but you've pulled into the lead. I just hope it stays that way. Well, for your sake, I hope so. I know, I know everybody's pulling for you, so let's wish you well. Stand over there and don't tremble so much. I can feel the quivers in your body. 
This gives a nice hand, folks. That's super. We hope you hold the lead. And the champion of the Bassmaster Florida Invitational, Charlie Murphy. His first BASS tournament victory worth $32,000. And for the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, a new record number of bass caught. 4,267, and the highest total of tournament limits, 355 seven bass daily limits for the three days. <laughs> Go ahead, tight troll. And now it's time for the pros pointers, the how-to section of the Bassmasters. The techniques Charlie Murphy and George Bowman used to catch their bass were similar. But there is a difference, as the new champion and runner-up explained the next morning. I could have used her yesterday. Well, George, you can see how this matted stuff is back in here with these reeds and all. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you can catch an opening back in there, but I found out during practice and during the tournament itself, the best thing to do is just right the edge of it and just catch a stem of grass, or preferably hydrilla, was my key factor with hyacinths on top of it. But anything you could catch sticking out at the edge to flip your worm back behind to where the worm would fall straight down beside the cover. And when the fish didn't hit it on the drop, you just had to more or less dead worm it. This technique would be called, I imagine. So you just let it lay and then after 15, 20 seconds, you just barely raise your rod just enough to raise the worm off the bottom a little bit and just let it fall back down and lay there for a little while longer. Did that probably three to four times. If nothing happened, you knew nothing was there because usually the second to third time he took it. Is this basically the same pattern you had, George? Or? No, I was fishing uh, uh, <clears throat> some of, of this type pattern, Charlie, but most, most of my fish came casting with, with a long cast and use a flipping stick where you could get a you know a good hook set. Right. A, a, a regular rod would just wouldn't have the uh, enough uh, power to end of the line to, to set your hook. So I was holding off of the reed line, uh, bull rush, you know, the hollow buggy whip type. Right. And uh, casting back into the heavy cover to the edge of it, and swimming out, and. Uh, up here close to uh, where you were at. There was some hydrilla growing out from those buggy whips. And the fish seemed to be in the scattered buggy whips between the, the hydrilla and the, sc and the scattered buggy whip. Mm -hmm. And I'd just throw back where it was thick and swim the, just kind of swim the worm back, back out to the hydrilla. And when I'd feel a hydrilla, I'd just pick it up and throw it right back in there. No, but swimming it real slow. I drop it and then pick it. Let it sit there just a minute and then pick it up and swim it out. Was you using any special type of rig to, for swimming it or? No, just pe just. Uh, well, I was pegging it, pegging my. Uh, I pegged my worm because we were pulling it through a lot of trash, you know. Mm -hmm. So to keep from pulling it down all the time. I took pick that worm and, and uh, swim her out. So you was just basically using a ribbon tail worm that was mm -hmm. Texas rigged and right. slow cranking it in. Mm -hmm. Next week, we'll be headed all the way across the country to the west, to California's Clear Lake. And we'll be fishing with Bassmaster Gary Klein as he shows us California-style bassing. It's a place where bass grow big and they chase bait into the shadows of volcanoes and gold mines. It's a great show. Don't you miss it. For the Bassmasters, this is Ray Scott, and we'll see you next week. The Bassmasters has been brought to you by Ranger Boat. We still build them one at a time. Abu Garcia, performance you can depend on. Humminbird, the ultimate in fish finding technology. DuPont Fishing Lines, the choice of champions. And by the Bass Angler Sportsman Society.